Yeah, there's a lot of two bedroom condos. There was one that sold the other week for 3.3 million. Whoa. So there's, there's <laughs> different options, right? Yeah. Today, we're bringing in an expert, a local Edmonds expert. We're going to talk about the city of Edmonds, whether or not it's a great place to live or not. Welcome to the show, Matt. I think the one thing that stands out, yeah. the downtown of Edmonds, okay. is what gives them the sense of community that other neighborhoods and cities lack. Mm -hmm. Because you go out unplanned, you run into neighbors, it's really a hub. It's almost like the Kirkland of the West. Oh, but more affordable. interesting. Location, if you want to get there, you know, look for something that isn't sparkling and then spend the money over time to fix it up. So you know you'll have a $2 million house and you'll be in a great location. One of my best friends is a firefighter in the Edmonds okay. area. Literally one of the best departments in the state, one of the highest cardiac save rates. The average in the country is a 34% save rate. And South County Fire, which covers Edmonds, is 62%. Literally sounds like too perfect, too perfect. There's gotta be some things that are not so great about Edmonds. Well. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Seattle Living and Wealth Building Show. Uh, it's a beautiful, sunny fall day here in Seattle, and I'm excited to talk about this fabulous neighborhood, this fabulous city you probably may have never heard of. Is it a good city to live in? Is it a city that is, uh, used to be called Deadman's? <laughs> well, you're going to find out, and you're going to find out about this, I would say a sleeper city that not a lot of people know about. So today we're bringing in an expert, a local Edmonds expert. We're going to talk about the city of Edmonds and whether or not, again, it's a great place to live or not. So Matt is a superstar real estate agent on the Wagner Real Estate Group, local Edmonds resident. You've probably seen him running throughout downtown Edmonds, maybe only if you're up at 5 a.m., but he runs a 1,000 miles <laughs> a year. If you do the math, that's three miles a day. Highlights local businesses. So we're going to learn everything there is to know about Edmonds. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you very much. What, a, what an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> All facts, though. Is that correct? The, those are facts. Okay. For sure. So why the heck does anybody want to watch a podcast about the city of Edmonds? Where the heck is it? And why should they even pay attention to this podcast? Good question. Well, Edmonds is about 15 miles north of downtown Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, and Edmonds kind of has a mix of like a small town charm, but it also has modern conveniences. It's right next to the water, right next to Puget Sound. So there's great water views. Uh, it's got a vibrant art scene, very walkable downtown, uh, a lot of good dining down there. And it has kind of a close-knit community feel that can be kind of hard to find in other cities in the area. All right, all right. You've got my interest. You've got my <laughs> interest. So let's, let's, uh, let's unpeel that back a little bit further. So we get a lot of people moving to the area. All right, there you go. I got a job in Seattle. Or I got a job in Bellevue. Maybe it's Amazon, Microsoft. You know, pick one of the big tech companies that we've got here, right? And they're trying to figure out where to live. Yeah. So, is it far? Is it going to be a long commute? Um, you know, what kind of person wants to actually live in Edmonds? So, I live in Edmonds currently, <laughs> and <laughs> but I work in Seattle a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it's super easy to get to Seattle. So yeah. a lot of people that moved to Edmonds actually live in Seattle now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been seeing more and more young families. So, you know, there's people that maybe live in a condo in Seattle. Mm -hmm. They just had their first kid. They're looking for some more space, maybe a bigger house, maybe a bigger yard, maybe some more street parking that mm -hmm. is, you know, disappearing in Seattle. Um, and a good spot for them to land is Edmonds. You can get a little more for your money as opposed to, you know, a Queen Anne area. Mm -hmm. uh, yards are on average a lot bigger. So that's good for the kids, good for the pets. Um, and it's, you know, like I said, it's got that community feel. So a lot mm -hmm. of people that are starting to have kids kind of want mm -hmm. a community where their kids can go play soccer and the baseball games. And there's, you know, events, art events. Um, so it gives them that community to, you know, start to raise a family. Mm. 
Well, it sounds very dreamy. It sounds very <laughs> perfect. Um, so it sounds very family oriented. Would you would you agree? It is. Mm -hmm. um, but there's you know there's a large there's a variety of demographics there. Um, like you mentioned earlier, uh, they used to call it Deadmans <laughs> um, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, that was a term that they used. It was kind of a sleepy town. Some called it, you know, a retirement community. Mm -hmm. But since the 2000s, there's been, like I said, more and more young families moving in. Um, so there are older people. There are the young families. There are the young kids. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the one demographic that you might not find as much is maybe the college age student. Mm -hmm. um, I think by that time, they'll go down to, you know, University of Washington or over to Washington State. And then, of course, uh, a lot of students that graduate. They usually stay close to the city after they graduate. They'll get an apartment with friends. Uh -huh. um, and there's not a lot of those options in Edmonds as far as big apartment buildings like you'll see in Ballard. Uh -huh. um, so I think that might be the one demographic uh -huh. that you don't see as much. But again, circling back to where they start to have the families, yeah. then they might be moving back to Edmonds uh -huh. to raise the family. Yeah, so I live in Capitol Hill right now, right? And Capitol Hill is teeming with all kinds of uh, young tech workers, you know, the bar scenes are busy. Everybody's walking to work. Um, do you see any of those, any of that demographic living in Edmonds? Or would you say, yeah, probably go look elsewhere? You know, the bar scene is not like it is in <laughs> Capitol Hill. Um, yeah. Anybody that's watching this and that lives in Seattle knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Capitol Hill is one of the most vibrant bar scenes eclectic type of, you know, restaurants and bars there. Uh, Edmonds a little more mild. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a couple places that stay open till two. Um, you know, you can mm -hmm. grab a, a drink there and there's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a sports bar feel to some of those places. But there's not the, you know, 12 foot speakers, club, <laughs> dancing all night type of places okay. in Edmonds. Right. But, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, why a lot of people move it's there. It's not what they're going for. It's not what they're going for. It's not exactly. what they're going for. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's real estate like there? I mean, is it, what, is it expensive? How would you describe it? What, what era are we looking at here? So that's a good question. I live, you know, Edmonds, Edmonds has about, 43,000 people mm -hmm. um, right now. And that's, I think they're about 25th largest in the state as far as population. So mm -hmm. fairly big as far as population, but there's different areas. And I live closer to downtown. I um, mean, you'll hear people call it the bowl. The bowl. So okay. that's, and it's literally shaped like a bowl mm -hmm. until you get down to the water. So yeah. I live in that area. Um, and that feels more like a community area. So it doesn't feel like a big city there. Um, and you know, that's one of the reasons people move there is because it doesn't feel like a big city, but still, you know, close to Seattle mm -hmm. and, and everything like that. Okay. So the Edmonds bowl, what would, would you say is the average price point in the bowl? And is it all single family houses for the most part? Uh, it's, there are a lot of condo options. Yeah. I would say average price of a house in the bowl mm -hmm. is not cheap. Yeah. Probably around 1.2 million. Um, but again, you go into different areas of Edmonds and you can find stuff that's cheaper than that. Yeah. But, you know, like even if you're not a real estate agent, you've heard of location, location, location. Yeah. So when people want to move to Edmonds, they want to move downtown and be as close to downtown as they can. So obviously the prices get more expensive. 1.2 maybe for a house, condo, 700,000. All right. And there's some different... Like a two-bedroom condo. Yeah, maybe there's a, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of two-bedroom condos. Yeah. A little bit smaller but then there's also some really nice ones that are you know uh there was one that sold the other week for 3.3 million a condo whoa so there's there's <laughs> different options right yeah. so some people that will go after those higher price point mm -hmm. condos maybe they had a big house on mercer island the kids moved out okay they want something smaller they're but downsizing they're, they're downsizing mm -hmm. retiring uh 2500 square mm -hmm. foot condo yeah, that that's incredible cost three million dollars okay. so there's options i think i know that community right is it a particular like so point, is that point edwards point edwards is where those point yeah edwards. it overlooks yeah. the sound it's mm -hmm. got great views of the marina the water okay. you can see up to would be yeah so that's when you've made it and you're old enough to live on your own, you're retired, 
and now you're downsizing to a two to three million dollar condo. Yeah, and not so. all the condos are like that, <laughs> but there all are right. options if, if that's what you're looking for. Okay, so, all right. So again, picture me as somebody who's just trying to figure out why the heck Edmonds. I think there are other cities around there as well too, right? Like Shoreline, um, Linwood, Mount Lake Terrace, right? How, how would those areas compare? Because I think they're all relatively close yeah. Right? And so, again, I'm just trying to get a feel for what the city of Edmonds is like and should I move there or not. Yeah. And there's, you know, those are all great communities. There's mm-hmm. great houses. Shoreline, Richmond Beach is a great, you mm-hmm. know, kind of a quieter beach town. Yeah. Uh, Mount Lake Terrace has great houses. Um, Linwood's got some great areas. Mm-hmm. Briar, they all have great areas. Um, yeah. I think the one thing that stands out, and I've already mentioned this many times so far is the downtown of Edmonds, right? I talked to a lot of people that feel like the downtown is what gives them the sense of community Mm -hmm. that other neighborhoods and cities lack Mm -hmm. because you go out unplanned, you go downtown, you run into neighbors, Mm -hmm. you know, you weren't expecting to meet them there, but you run into them. There's people walking their dogs, strollers. So it's really a hub of where everyone can go and meet even if they're not planning on it, Mm -hmm. which other communities kind of lack. So that really gives it a unique feel. You know, I tell some people it's almost like uh, the Kirkland of the West. Oh, interesting. Ah, Right? Okay. So it's got that downtown feel without the skyscrapers, without Mm -hmm. the tall buildings. Yeah. Um, And it's a place that people can go and run into each other at any time. Right. So I think that's a pretty a good compliment. Like me living in Capitol Hill where I live, if I lived somewhere else, I've always thought like downtown Kirkland was pretty cool because it's so walkable. You're right there in the water, all kinds of different restaurants. And, you know, that's kind of the appeal that I have in Capitol Hill, not the bar scene part, but lots of parks and lots of different areas and neighborhoods to go to. So um, as Kirkland of the West, but a little bit cheaper, like, Describe a describe a Friday night for for me, Matt. Matt, Matt's married. Okay, what are you gonna do tomorrow night? So a Friday <laughs> night mm-hmm. in Edmonds is great. So Edmonds, you know, Monday through Friday has more of the small town feel. Mm-hmm. But more and more, the weekends have become more popular because people want to go hang out in Edmonds, mm-hmm. even though they don't live there or yeah. they haven't been able to find a house there. Um, one place that a lot of locals recommend is Salt and Iron. Okay. Um, so a lot of people will go there that don't even live in Edmonds. Great surf and turf. Yeah. Uh, across the street is Fire and Feast. Sounds like great steak. Italian. Yeah, Salt steak. And iron. Exactly. And fire and Feast. Um, one of our favorite places <laughs> that me and my wife will go, yeah. you know, on a Friday hmm. is to get some pizza. And okay. I think the best pizza in town is Niles Peacock. Mm-hmm. Um, and Niles Peacock. Niles Peacock. So the owner, okay. Niles, yeah. his name is Niles Peacock. Mm-hmm. He's the owner. He's the real deal. He will go around the world and enter into pizza making competitions. Like he'll go to Italy, go mm-hmm. to Vegas, and he'll win these things. So he is the real deal. I mean, he has awards from all over the world. Okay. Uh, you guys watching at home, just Google Niles Peacock. You'll see him <laughs> in the newspaper. Um, yeah. He also he has a background in you know making mixed drinks and cocktails, mm-hmm. and when you see him make these things, it looks like he's making art. So mm-hmm. it's the real deal down there. Favorite pizza for sure. Um, okay. But there's other places. There's sushi. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, there's Victor Tavern, which is a mm-hmm. new spot. They've got places in Seattle, obviously. Um, That's uh, Ethan Stoll. Ethan right? Stoll mm-hmm. restaurant. They even got they have a little uh, bowling alley upstairs. Okay. So. There's a lot of cool spots that you can go out on Friday. Sounds, sounds kind of trendy. And you know, it's, again, <laughs> like, not as trendy a, as Capitol cool Hill. In a vibe kind of way, right? Not, yeah. not necessarily what I would expect for a city that used to be called, like, Deadman's. Yeah, uh-huh. it's not Deadman's anymore. Uh-huh. It's, yeah. And the thing about Edmonds is, it is it's gotten more trendy yeah. with the younger people. But physically, it can't really expand too much. Uh-huh. There's not really room to... Um, I'll tell you a phrase that some people will say in Edmonds that you hear, okay. which is don't ballardize Edmonds. So a lot of the locals that have <laughs> lived oh, in Edmonds for a while. Oh, and it's Ballard there. Huh? Yeah, nothing against Ballard. Yeah. Um, but they, de- they don't want it to get big like that. And the thing is with Edmonds, there's mm-hmm. not room to put in these okay. huge apartment buildings that mm-hmm. there are in Ballard, you know, 300 unit apartment buildings in Ballard. There's just nowhere to do that in Edmonds. So... 
All of you that are thinking about don't Ballardize Edmonds, don't worry, it's not going to turn into Ballard. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's not going to grow you know, physically that much, but it has become more you know, hip, a little yeah. more modern, um, a lot more to do down there. All right, might, might have to do a double date, me and Lisa, you and Chelsea. So it sounds Anytime, kind of you're fun. more than welcome. Yeah, it sounds kind of cool. Um, okay, so now Edmonds... I think there's a ferry there, right, as well. Um, like, describe the whole waterfront. What kind of vibe is that like? Because I'm picturing this bowl, right? You got a bowl. You got a bowl. <laughs> In the middle of the bowl are all these cool restaurants, I guess, yeah. I suppose. Is it like a bowl, like a, almost like a skater park bowl that goes right down to the water? It really is. You know, take a big yeah. punch bowl, cut it in half, yeah. scoot it up to the Puget Sound. <laughs> That's the bowl of okay. Edmonds, That's right? And at visual. the bottom is yeah. the downtown area. And um, yeah, so there is a ferry. Literally drive down Main Street, and it's called mm-hmm. Main Street. It goes mm-hmm. right through downtown. You keep going, you will drive right onto the ferry, which mm-hmm. goes to Kingston. So that's how close it is to the water. Yeah. The ferry's right there. The restaurants are right around the ferry. A lot of the restaurants, you can see the water. You can see the train go by. Oh, you can nice. see the ferry come mm-hmm. in and out while you're you know, watching the Husky game mm-hmm. at Rory's. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. it's right down there. Um, the, the Sounder goes right by town, too. And the so Sounder is what? The Sounder, so we've got the light rail, which okay. a lot of people have heard about. The Sounder is the older one. It's on its actual train right. on the track. And it goes along the water, right? goes along the yeah. water. So yeah. a lot of people will use the Sounder to commute to work to mm-hmm. Seattle. It's Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. um, whereas the Sounder... So they actually have a train station that just allows you to go, over, and it's right at the bowl. Yeah, yeah, right down to... To make commutes easy. Yep, commuting mm-hmm. is super you easy. Go. You don't have to drive. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people that use that for work, right. and the station is right down by the ferry, so you can hop on that in the morning, come back mm-hmm. when you're done working. Um, so that's super convenient. Mm-hmm. The new light rail, obviously that's been a big project in the Northwest, yeah. so they've opened... I would say the closest stations are Linwood and Mount Lake Terrace. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just opened. I haven't been on the light rail yet, but my wife has. She actually just took the light rail uh, to downtown Seattle the other mm-hmm. week. She said it took 28 minutes. Yeah. And incredible. you get off, you don't have to park. It was super mm-hmm. easy. Um, so that's another option for people as far as transportation if they're still working, you know, yeah. down in Seattle. Right. And so that goes into Seattle. Um, the, this light, these, the northern end of these light rail stations just opened. I know as a real estate agent, a lot of our clients are always saying, okay, get me close to the right light rail, like within 10 to 15 minutes. So if you live within 10 to 15 minutes of the light rail, and then you maybe wait five minutes for the light rail, and then it's 28 minutes downtown, you can pretty consistently keep your commute at 40 minutes, yeah. which sometimes in Seattle to get from, like, for example, Ballard to Capitol Hill, it can literally take me 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's about two and a half miles. <laughs> yeah. Three and a half it's... miles, not to scare anybody, but you know, that's just the difference of you think it's a long ways and you think the commute is a long ways. Sometimes getting through downtown Seattle traffic and the different neighborhoods around Seattle can yeah. cause traffic. So that's a huge benefit. The light rail has really opened up opportunities for lots of people. Yeah. And I mean, like you mentioned, it doesn't matter what the traffic is, mm-hmm. the light rail is going to be pretty much the same right. commute time whenever yeah. you take it, right? Um, and I lived in Seattle for a long time, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, you're not just Going, some Edmonds guy no. who grew up there and says, no. all Edmonds all the time. I've lived in many neighborhoods <laughs> in Seattle, so okay. going east-west, like you said, if yeah. you're like deep in Ballard, to get to the freeway, that mm-hmm. can be, I mean, that can be a trek. Mm-hmm. The nice thing about yeah. Edmonds is they have a highway that goes straight from downtown right to I-5. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to hit all these side streets like you're going through Green Lake and you're hitting every light, there's traffic. Yeah. You can hop on the highway, get right to the freeway. So if you want to use your car and not use the sound or the light rail, it's also a lot easier than it is in the heart of Seattle. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. All right. What about, what else is there to do? So you got, a, you got the downtown. Are there actual beaches there? Do people go to beaches or is it not really a beach, beach scene? What, what's, what's the waterfront like? Uh, so there's no swim up bars, yeah. <laughs> but it, there is okay. definitely a beach. No swim up bars in 50 degree uh, water here, 55 not, degree water. Not yet, yeah, at least. Not yet. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, but yeah, me and my wife have we've gone down there. We'll bring a cooler and mm-hmm. just have a little picnic mm-hmm. down there on the beach. Put out some lawn chairs on the beach. Mm-hmm. Watch nice. the ferry going in and out. Actual sand. 
Actual sand, yeah. a real beach. Mm -hmm. You can build a sand castle. Good, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you'll see a lot of people on the weekends will come down there mm -hmm. that don't live right yeah. in the area because they want to come down and hang out on the beach, especially mm -hmm. in the summer. Okay. Uh, it's about a mile long worth mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh, shoreline in Edmonds. Yeah. There's a dog park that is right on the beach as well that's yeah. separate from, you know, where you can hang out by yourself and... Um, so that's really great to let the dogs go out. They can yeah. go in the water if they want, but it's all fenced off. So the beach um, is really great. There's underwater um, scuba diving there. There's, they've got like an underwater park there mm -hmm. with different wildlife and stuff you can see in there. Yeah. You'll see people doing the polar plunge every year, <laughs> running down there <laughs> in the winter doing uh -huh. that. So people yeah. are using the beach in the summer and in the winter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that. I guess it's... Uh fun to do if you're into that yeah. i haven't done it myself yeah. but i will say i do run in the morning like you mentioned yeah. i run in the morning and i'll mm -hmm. see people swimming in yeah. the morning in the winter so well, the, the beach is getting used so what's it like uh i don't know early in the morning or at night let's talk like some of the nitty-gritty that you know people don't always like to talk about but like sure know, i don't know crime homelessness, you know, that's one of the challenges of the Seattle area, just to be honest, right? Lots of neighborhoods and lots of, lots of homeless people. And um, yeah, it's pretty challenging and it's not what a lot of people are looking for. So has Edmonds kind of been infiltrated or have, have any issues like that? How would you describe it? Well, if you want to talk the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. maybe there's some nitty, but there's definitely not a lot of gritty. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. You know, I go out and I run early mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. These might be times where if you're out in Seattle, mm -hmm. you might not feel that safe. But, I mean, it, it just it couldn't feel more safe. Mm -hmm. I go out there, I'll see maybe a couple of people walking their dog early in the morning. Yeah. I see all the delivery trucks going to the bakeries and mm -hmm. the coffee shops making their yeah. deliveries in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, crime, late, crime rate is very low mm -hmm. in Edmonds. I think some people have stolen mail out of mailboxes at one point um, <laughs> uh -huh. but there's really uh -huh. it's there's not a lot of crime it's really uh -huh. safe i mean there's i'm sure there's people that still leave their doors unlocked there mm -hmm. i don't recommend but mm -hmm. if you're gonna do it i guess Edmonds would be the place to do it yeah um it's the streets are quiet in the morning they're quiet at night mm -hmm. uh and there's you know there's not a lot of crime there's there's mm -hmm. not homelessness like you know, tent encampments or anything like that yeah. that you might see in Ballard or other Seattle areas. Um, but it really is a really safe area. And when you go there, you feel safe. Yeah. Like I said, I go early in the morning and I feel very safe. It literally sounds like too perfect, too perfect. There's got to be some things that are not <laughs> so great about Edmonds. Well, um, you know, as, as an unbiased person who has lived there what, quite a while and enjoyed it, but has also lived in other neighborhoods. Like, tell me, maybe there isn't, right? I'm just trying to throw it out there so people have uh, people know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, there is no perfect place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Perfect is for whatever the buyer wants, right. wherever they want to live. Capitol Hill is perfect for some people, mm -hmm. and yeah. they would hate Edmonds. Right. Edmonds, people that love Edmonds, it's perfect for them, would hate Capitol okay. Hill, yeah. right? Yeah, Could be. So it depends on what you're looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah. For a lot of people that want the quiet, you know, neighborhood, yeah. Edmonds is perfect. It's yeah. on the water. You know, it's, it's perfect yeah. for some people. So okay. I don't see any huge red flags that I could point out to you, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, it's more of a lifestyle and what, what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sounds like, does traffic get nuts downtown at all? Just, are there certain times where you're like, okay, it's going to take me 20 minutes to get to the freeway because we're all trying to get to the freeway at the same time, and then I got to deal with... You know, if you're not taking the light rail, right? Not everybody can take the light rail. Not everybody can take the sounder, right? If they just have to actually get in a car and commute. Yeah, traffic is, I mean, coming from Seattle, mm -hmm. where I lived for a long yeah. time, it's night and day. Mm -hmm. You know, my, so my wife, uh, she actually had never lived outside of Seattle mm -hmm. until we moved to Edmonds. So oh, she yeah. thought, wait, Edmonds, where is that? Is that mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> now she loves it yeah. and so anytime she goes back to seattle she's like oh there's nowhere to park it's busy so mm -hmm. traffic is much better um mm -hmm. i would say the weekends there's the most traffic because like i said people coming in people actually coming in right they do come in a, do you have a nickname for them at all or no 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I tell my wife, I'm like, oh, there's all the people from Everett coming. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where all these cars, there's just so many cars. You don't see them during the week. Okay, so Everett, so Everett by, comes for context, to visit. is like, what, 30 minutes north? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, you know, in other cities, right, they call them like Bridge and Tunnel. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've said Everett. That's, is... that's a, definitely a Manhattan thing where yeah. you know, everybody from the suburbs comes through or they either arrive via bridge yeah. <laughs> or they take a tunnel. Yeah. So, yeah, instead there's just Everett. But Everett. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, Matt won't be selling any houses in Everett very soon, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great place to live. Not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Up and coming, kind of. Is it? Would you consider it up and coming? I guess that's, it sounds like it shouldn't be a secret anymore. Right? It's a hard to get property there, right? If I want to live there. Yeah. You know, I think maybe that, that might be a challenge yeah. right, for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, you know, I don't know if I would call it up and coming. Mm-hmm. I think it maybe it's here, yeah, right. But the demand, mm-hmm. you know, it can be hard to get in there. Yeah, a lot of people move to Edmonds and they don't leave for forty years, mm-hmm. so it can be hard to you know get maybe a house. Not there. as much turnover. Yeah, you know, not like as once much. Once people get into Edmonds, they mm-hmm. they are pretty happy. Yeah, and you know, I think a lot of stuff changed during COVID. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people that started to work from home, uh, whether they were working downtown at Amazon or whatever it may be started to go out to the suburbs. And so a lot of people learned about Edmonds, you know, Mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. And so they tell their friends about Edmonds. So I think there's a lot more demand, but you know, resources are limited. Houses are limited there. So not everyone that wants to live there can get in there. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the houses I would say kind of built in the sixties, seventies. And so a lot of them are remodeled because there's not a lot of room to expand. So a lot of people just remodel the houses, make them super nice. Um, but one way to get in is find a house that hasn't been updated in a long time. Uh. So actually, the house that me and my wife bought, great house, um, just very dated, right? So we got a good price on it, and we remodeled everything. So that's one way yeah. to, you know, location. If you want to get there, you know, look for something that isn't, you know, sparkling and shiny and uh-huh. ready. Get in there. Get the location, get the house in the place that you want, and then spend the money over time to fix it up. And you know, okay. next thing you know, you'll have a two million dollar house, yeah, and, and you'll be in a great location. Yeah. So there are ways to get in, mm-hmm. and you got into the bowl right yeah. away. What are the other neighborhoods? Just for context, right? We're talking about the the pinnacle. Yeah. <laughs> when you've arrived at the bowl, but are there other good neighborhoods there as well too? Yeah, definitely. So. You go up north, you'll get into the Talbot area, which is also mm. along the water. There's some really expensive homes there, mm-hmm. um, but that's a nice neighborhood. Seaview, uh, it's up kind of on the hill. That's a nice area. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll see Westgate. Seaview. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So there's, there's a lot of neighborhoods up on the hill, mm-hmm. and they'll be more affordable too. Yeah. Um, not a lot of new construction in the Bull area, but if you get up on the hill, you'll start to see some more new construction if that's what you're looking for not a lot of townhouses down there um you know and that's you know part of zoning and and if you know once in a while there's a tear down and if it's zoned right they'll put some townhouses but not a lot um because that could be an option if you're looking at a lower price point but if you get up to some of those other areas that are outside of the bowl there's some more affordable stuff and then you've got the downtown that's just a couple minute drive mm-hmm. away. So yeah. that can be a good option so, as well. So the access is there. So it hasn't seen the townhome boom that has happened in Seattle where because of density, right, and the desire by the city council and city planners to have more housing available, you know, we allowed single family houses to be torn down and put up six townhomes. And that has created a lot of density, but it's also increased traffic but you know we have a lot of housing demand here so do you not see that happening in Edmonds yeah we haven't seen that um Uh like I mentioned before there's a lot of condo options yeah um so that would be you know a lower price point that you could get in there but we haven't seen a ton of townhouses Uh um a lot of the homes the older homes that I've seen that maybe have been torn down and built they've just built a big beautiful new single family house Uh and haven't put on you know four townhouses like you see in Seattle. So, and that helps with the traffic, of course, Mm -hmm. you know, you take away one house and put four families there. There's a lot lot more cars. So we haven't seen that. 
Um, but there are a few townhome options. Uh, but just it hasn't boomed like mm-hmm. Seattle as far as the, the townhouses. So mm-hmm. a lot of people see that as a plus, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, one of the challenges is that SeaTac Airport is so far away, right? So if somebody travels a lot for work, um, they got to get into SeaTac. I mean, it is what it is, right? Because yeah. you're on the north end. I think you can take 90 minutes. I don't know, just throwing that number out there. It could probably take 40 minutes. Uh, if you're lucky, 45 minutes, but it could take 90 minutes to two hours to get into SeaTac. Um, yeah. But there is a new option, right? There, there is. is Payne Field, yes, which is in this lovely city of Everett. <laughs> <laughs> and Payne Field has opened up some options. And describe the airport experience at Payne Field and why you know, that's now a, a good option for people. Yeah, so Payne Field is, I mean, you talk to anybody that kind of lives up further north outside of Seattle mm-hmm. and uses Payne Field, loves it. I love it. My wife loves it. My friends love it. Um, it's about 20, 25 minutes away from Edmonds mm. and it has two gates and you can arrive 10 minutes before your flight and get on the plane. I mean, you can get out of your car mm-hmm. and be on the plane in 10 minutes wow. through check, you know, everything. Um, it's, and it feels more like a, it feels more like a hotel lobby mm-hmm. than it does an airport terminal. There's a great restaurant in there. There's lounge chairs, leather chairs. There's a fireplace. Um, it and it's never crowded. You just walk through yeah. the gate and you're there. And it's, I mean, sounds I, like a private jet experience it, almost. So. It feels like yeah. a mm-hmm. little more expensive than SeaTac. Okay, um, but I mean, it's fabulous. And, yeah. and we fly. We'll fly down and see. I've got family down in Palm Springs, mm-hmm. and so. From Payne to the Palm Springs Airport, which is another small airport. Mm-hmm. I mean, it feels more like you're going to a bus station. And mm-hmm. It's just so easy. There's yeah. there's no crowds. It's mm-hmm. nice. It's e- it's it's great. Yeah. So, Painfield highly recommend Painfield mm-hmm. if you live in the Edmonds area. Definitely yeah. use Painfield. And Painfield doesn't. It's Alaska Airlines only. Correct? Is that yeah. right? And the, and the options are generally West Coast right now, right? Maybe Phoenix and yeah, LA Phoenix. and Palm Springs yeah. and yeah. They mm-hmm. also, yeah, so, you know, the mm-hmm. Southern California, Phoenix, like you said, um, they also go to Anchorage and they'll fly to Honolulu as well. Okay. So those are options. Vegas. Yeah. Vegas as well, too. And Vegas. All right. Vegas as well, too. Flies so. to Vegas. There you so, go. Um, you can go yeah, I Vegas. almost th- like wonder for myself, right? I live in Capitol Hill. I almost wonder if it would be worth taking the probably 35 minute, 40 minute drive up to Everett. I guess it depends on what time the flight flight leaves. Otherwise, other other than going to SeaTac, the problem with SeaTac Airport right now is the, the amount of time you wait to get your baggage, and the amount of time it takes to get through security adds so much time. So yeah. it sounds like with pain, even if you have a longer commute, you can get through everything much quicker. Yeah, you can get through everything much mm-hmm. quicker, and it's also nice yeah. when you get home off one of those late flights. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I still got to drive all the way home. <laughs> yeah. At Payne, you get off the plane, you get in your car, and you're home in 20 mm-hmm. minutes. It's, you know, you get home at midnight. It's, it's pretty nice to, yeah, that to do incredible. it quick. So. Um, hmm. Well, what else is there that people should know about, you know, about this lovely, dreamy city of Edmonds? It reminds me of, you know, the neighborhood of Magnolia where... You know, maybe 10 years ago or so, Magnolia, it's only 20, 15 minutes from downtown Seattle, like 12 minutes with no traffic. But it reminds me of that neighborhood because that used to be an area where it was a bunch of retirees, super sleepy. Um, They had a little downtown Main Street. It felt like, what is it, Mayberry Street, like some old little little TV show. And then, you know, as... And maybe it's the baby boomers retired a little bit. So many young families. The schools are top rated. It's one of the most highly desirable places. And I, I think of, of all the many Seattle neighborhoods that have experienced a lot of price appreciation. That one, that neighborhood in particular, has grown tremendously, mainly due to all the families moving into the area and the top rated schools and the proximity to downtown Seattle. Yet, feeling very quiet and private because that Magnolia area is on its own little island out there. You yeah. have to cross a bridge to get there. Nobody goes into that area unless they need to. Um, so, I anyway, know it sounds like that's where 
that's yeah. that's where Edmonds has gone to, and maybe will continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, similar to that area. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it was a sleepy town, but the younger people that have moved in, and there's there's events happening yeah. all the time. You know, there's the Edmonds Classic Car Show. People mm-hmm. come in from everywhere to go to that. Yeah. There's Taste of Edmonds. They put on this big stage with live bands and music mm-hmm. that are playing. They do Porch Fest, which is another live music. So they'll have, you know, this local artist or people that come in and play music in mm-hmm. front of shops, in front of houses, and you can just walk through the oh, neighborhood yeah. in downtown and listen to live music. Uh, the next one coming up is Halloween, Trick or Treat. There's mm-hmm. thousands of people that come okay. down. They come do... into the area for yeah. that, for sure. Yeah. So they'd go downtown and the, and the, you know, restaurants, shops, stores down there will pass out candy They'll have music playing, like all sorts of people dressed up and kind of little events going on throughout. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a ton of events that happen all year. Uh, Wine stuff, you know, wine tasting. There's stuff for kids. There's stuff for adults. So there's Mm -hmm. always events. There's always something happening, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just, oh, there's great restaurants. There's actually events happening that people from out of town will come Okay. Too All right. as well. Yeah. Go Edmonds. I've I've wanted to go to the Taste of Edmonds. Is it as busy as the Bite of Seattle, which is just absolutely nuts, and you have to wait thirty minutes just to get a get a bite of food, or is it no. not that bad? Yeah. Not as you know, not as crowded as yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little more local, but there is great food. You know, some of the restaurants will have stuff there. They'll bring in food trucks. Yeah. There's a beer garden, like I said, the big stage with mm-hmm. some really good cover bands, um, and that's a lot of fun. But they do, you know, all sorts of events, mm-hmm. music events. The Edmonds Center for the Arts, they have plays and stuff. It used to, mm-hmm. So the Edmonds Center for Arts, the building is really cool. It was built in the 30s. And it used to be uh, the Edmonds High School. And I think it stopped being the high school in 1975. Mm-hmm. Okay. But really cool building. I, me and my wife went to a stand-up comedy show there uh, a couple months ago. So that was really cool. Mm-hmm. So even, you know, and they were... The guy that was doing it, I can't remember his name. Sorry if you're watching this. I know that you are, too. Mm-hmm. Um, he flew in from L.A. to do a special there. So they had cameras on wow. cranes and everything cool. in there. Mm-hmm. Um, they were hyping up the crowd. So he came in all the way from L.A. to Sleepy Little Evans to do an actual stand-up special that, you know, he's going to put on Netflix or whatever. So. Dude. So a lot that you know, a lot of events that happen mm-hmm. in Edmonds. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you got arts, you got food scene, you got parks, you got family friendly. You can go walk, run safely, easy access to transportation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there seems to be a lot of something for everybody, unless you're just looking for like this Capitol Hill vibe. You know, and you, yeah. it doesn't sound like you're going to be ballardized, which is uh, because there's no ability. For condo projects, massive condo projects. There's no zoning changes around massive townhomes. There's only so much space. Are there any other projects? Like I think I've heard of the waterfront, like redevelopment projects, something of that nature, where they're just kind of improving what already sounds pretty good. Like there's parks and pathways and public spaces all around the downtown waterfront. Um, yeah, easy to walk. Be an ongoing project. Yeah, yeah waterfront center down there, mm-hmm. which is a big deal. A um, lot of donors helped to build that. Mm. Um, Rick Steves, local Edmonds guy, right. was one of the biggest. I think he was the biggest donor mm-hmm. um, for the the water the center there. And they do you know all ages type of stuff there. They'll do plays. They'll be uh, you know informative lessons that you can go learn how to do different things, mm-hmm. cooking or art. Um, but stuff for kids there, stuff for older people there. So that's been a great um, improvement. On, and it's right on the waterfront, too. You step over the railing, you're in the sand, the mm-hmm. real sand on the real yeah. beach. Um, so that is so that's a great thing mm-hmm. that they've added um, over the past few years to the, uh, the downtown area and the beach area. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Arnie's, another restaurant that's right on the beach. Mm-hmm. Anthony's, we have an Anthony's. Yeah. Right on the beach there, overlooking the marina, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, very safe down there. I will mention, so I have one of my best friends is a firefighter in the Edmonds okay. area. Um, and so I know a little bit about his department. It's one of the best departments in the state. So South mm-hmm. County Fire, uh, they cover Edmonds, they cover Briar, Mount Lake Terrace, mm-hmm. um, and a couple other unincorporated areas. But literally one of the best departments in the state, one of the highest cardiac save rates uh, in the country. 
So essentially, you know, someone has a heart attack, fire department shows up, EMTs um, provide medical care. The average in the country is a 34% save rate. The average in the state is 38%. And South County Fire, which covers admins, is 62%. So medically wise, <laughs> you're in very good hands yeah, if you yeah. choose to move to mm -hmm. admins, for okay. sure. Yeah, well, that's fantastic to hear. It kind of, again, supports how safe the area feels. And mm -hmm. they've got uh, good services as well. So is Edmonds a place that has a lot of growth potential? Do you see a lot of change happening? Um, you know, what are your kind of parting thoughts about Edmonds? And what's, what's the takeaway for our viewers today? Yeah, so, so like I mentioned, I don't think the size you know, geographically is going to grow that much. There's just not a lot of space, which a lot of people like. Mm -hmm. um, but there is some room for more businesses, newer businesses, different types of businesses that can offer different things to the community to make it a more vibrant, you know, full, complete community. There's a little more room for some more different types of entertainment, you know, things to do. So in that sense, I think it's going to grow, not just from a size sense, but mm -hmm. kind of what, what the culture is like there. Um, so I think if you are, you know, maybe living in the city and you're looking for some more space, you're looking for a bigger house, a bigger yard, some quieter streets, a walkable downtown with great food, uh, then I think, you know, Edmonds might be the spot for you. Yeah. All right. Well, I concur based on everything <laughs> I've heard today. Uh, we've got a future uh, double date in order so I can see all this firsthand. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Matt. So thanks for, have, thanks for being on the show. Uh, for all our viewers who are interested in actually getting a hold of you so they can learn more about Edmonds, uh, possibly explore real estate, or just have some questions, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, you can reach me. You can email me at matt at mwagnerteam.com. Uh, you can call me. My number is 425-501-8363. Shoot me a text. If you got any questions about Edmonds or any other areas around there, let me know, and I'm happy to help. Okay. And what about your Instagram? Instagram is Matt M Real Estate. Um, definitely give it a follow. You're going to see me at all the restaurants down there. I promote all the, the shops down there um, and, and keep you informed of what's going on. So give me a follow. All right. Awesome. All right, Matt. Thanks for uh, being on the show. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody on the next show. We'll talk about some other awesome city or awesome area you've never heard of.